Hello everyone. Welcome to GT and Abacus Learning. I got few requests from students in Nepal who are in their final year to do lecture sessions on computational technique, which is similar to what I'm doing right now in Abacus in my other playlist. Due to this lockdown and all, students are having difficulties in studying, getting the right materials. This is just an effort to ease and smoothen your progress in your studies. What I'll be doing here is that I'll be going through different important sections of the syllabus of Trivuvan University on computational techniques. Here I'll be giving several lectures and solving several problems. After the final chapter is complete, I may come live and you can have your questions regarding computational technique or you can send me an email while I am giving lectures to the email address given in the description below. You can ask about computational technique or any structural analysis problems you are having or problems related to your structural dynamics or earthquake engineering. I can show how to solve your problems in following YouTube lecture sessions. The first chapter in TU syllabus is Introduction to Numerical Computation where there are several sections. I'll be only going through some important sections and from the next session I'll start the actual problem solving from chapter 2 which is solution to linear equations. So let's get started. What is computational technique or what is finite element analysis? Let's say you have a problem such as a tower like this or some towers like this which have pulled out the ground underneath. Let's say these are electrical towers that you mostly find along the roads and there will be some some branches going on like this and wires like like this so the problem here is let's say you have an earthquake like this you want to see if this tower is going to stay straight or it's going to pull out from the ground during this earthquake shaking now there are several ways of solving it. For example, one of the ways is like using analytical method. If you form equations, then let's say this is earthquake acceleration AE. So you have mass in this structure, M. Along the height, you may get some arbitrary forces acting like this in this direction because of the acceleration below. At different points here and let's say you want to find what will be the bending moment here and reaction force here because of this loading and then you can figure out if it's going to pull out depending upon the bearing capacity of the soil and so on so for this process you form different equations based on equilibrium conditions and then you solve it when you solve it what you'll have is that you'll get closed form solution. Let's say you are determining x here on this tower at some point t in time. This function x will be in a form of equation and whenever you put a value t you can solve your equations or some solutions may have variables which depend upon the height of the of the tower h x h t you know you want to find what will be the displacement at height h at certain time t you'll get an equation out of it you can solve this but the thing is that this analytical method will be mostly applicable to simple problems such as cantilever beam simply supported beams or you may have kind of a continuous beam like this. Analytical methods will work only for simpler problems like this. Or maybe a frame model and all that. 
now you can solve this problem by another method which is known as numerical method or competition technique what is a numerical method or what is competition technique it is just that you have to represent this structure in some form of mathematical expression using certain assumptions so the first point here is this is a mathematical expression where different approximations are assumed now this method is suitable for complex problems the disadvantage of this method is that when you solve a problem you can't just rely on the solution that you are getting from numerical methods for example if you are solving a beam like this having a line load like this then when you solve using this numerical method then you have to verify these models using analytical expressions as well just to show that the method you are using to solve this problem or the mathematical expressions you have provided are okay now under this numerical method we have finite element method FEM where we will discuss this later on in chapter 4 in the numerical problem you can assume this structure to be a cantilever beam having certain cross section like this and then you can assume a load acting here like P and then solve it but in FEM we have to follow certain rules so we have to know some definitions before we actually start solving these problems I will discuss these briefly in this lecture and then we'll discuss it, it in detail when you reach uh, chapter 4 which is dedicated to FEM now the third way to find the solution of this one would be to go in the lab and do some experiments so here you go in the lab and then you will put some instruments to measure it so you'll get the actual value but thing is that when working in the lab you need some expertise you need some experience because setting up the actuators the ram the instrumentation parts the string parts and all takes time and you have to have proper application to run those programs and you need to know how to modify or apply different loading protocols to get your results so this is kind of like time consuming generally what we do is that we don't only test one specimen we generally test minimum of three specimens of same type to have confidence in the results that we are getting in here we can use actuators potentiometers string pots or you may use strain gauges to measure the strains let's say you want to do an experiment on this one and to see how much this one displaces based on this earthquake for this what you'll need is you'll need a shake table like this and this one is connected to a computer controller and where you feed in the data the earthquake data here this will pass the data to the shake table and shake table will shake it will simulate the earthquake and on, on top of this you can have a plate with bowls here and then your tower like this and to measure the displacements at different points along the height what we will have is a vertical stationary frame here we can have string ports like this which are instruments that are used to measure the displacement so one can be attached here let's say there are four of them now when you give an earthquake loading this is going to shake and this will bend like this and like this under this type of loading and these will measure the values as certain time increments you can have this reading this reading this reading and this reading based on time for example you'll have something like this this is your time this is your millimeters so it will give you a plot let's say this instrument is v1 so your v1 
will be something like like this where this where this is positive this is negative this is positive reading this is negative reading then you can also plot your v2 if this is v2 then you can have your v2 as well which will be slightly smaller like this depending upon the natural frequency of this rod and the time period or the frequency of the acceleration this uh, tower may bend like this or it can bend like this so these readings will give you that those modes as well so this is how we do experiment on it and then if you want to measure the forces you can have load cells like this attached here so load cells measure the loads measure the reaction forces in your space event so actuators are kind of ramps which are used to push a structure to certain displacements or forces potentiometers are used to measure the displacement string potentiometers so they have a string which are used to measure the displacements load cells are used to measure the loads so this can be solved using experiment as well but this is time consuming so therefore engineers uh, generally prefer the numerical method to solve it it is faster and it is simpler to solve even intricate problems can be solved using numerical methods so i'll move into description of fem so what is fem so there are three terms here finite element and method so let's move into finite here what do you mean by finite let's take the same structure below now this will have different points different particles or let's say nodes different nodes there will be many many nodes here many means infinite so this will have infinite right, particles or you can say nodes since this has infinite particles each particle can move in different direction so in a, in a 3d if you are looking in a 3d each particle can move in x direction y direction z direction can rotate about this point can rotate about this axis each particle can move in any direction and has six degrees of freedom if you try to solve for each particles let's say during that earthquake here at certain time t you want to know the location of one particle here another particle here this particle may move this side may move this side this particle may move here this particle may move here so when you try to assemble this after certain time t it may look something like this where this is original location so you see that each particle has moved here here maybe here here now doing this takes very long time therefore we have to form certain combination of finite nodes or finite particles so instead of taking all these particles what i can do here is i can take this particle one particle from here one particle from here one particle here one 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 and one now we have reduced our problem from infinite nodes to finite nodes so there are one two three four five six seven let's say one here eight and one right at the bottom nine to a nine node problem so finite means we are taking an structure really structure which may be a tower a building anything and then simplifying that to a simple problem of certain node and solving this is much easier and faster than solving this now let's go into the second term which is the element here we have nine nodes right each node must be connected they cannot be free so I can connect this node to this node, this node to this node, like this. 
Now these nodes are connected by certain mathematical expression which are known as elements or you can say that each node is connected to the other node by a certain element. If you take this part out now this part will have one node here and one node here. Since these elements look like a line they are known as 1D element or line element. Let's say we're the same structure like this and let's say we are not going to form node like this we are going to have nodes here like this. Now each of these nodes have to be connected right so you can connect a node like this in here you can connect a node like this if you want like this so here what we're doing is that we are using 2d analysis so you can see that this is a plate this forms a plate this is a triangular plate rectangular plate so these types of elements where there are minimum of three nodes such as this triangle here like this three nodes or such as this here which has four nodes are known as 2d elements or you can have your structure like this if that was a rectangular section and you can form elements you can divide this structure like this into certain cuboids if you take this section out now this section will be formed by interconnecting one two three four five six seven eight eight nodes you can have it like that or sometimes you can have it like this these kind of elements as well which will have five nodes now these ones are known as 3d elements the most simplified model is formed by using 1d elements as the complexity of the element increases when element when 1d element is substituted by 2d element and the 2d element is substituted by the 3d elements then the time taken to solve this problem also increases now at these nodes these are nodes right at each nodes you'll get when you solve it you'll get a force and you'll get a displacement so at every node you'll get a force and you'll get a displacement let's take this structure again let's say we are doing a 1d model like this and we have one node here and one node here which means that we can only find displacement at this node and at this node if you are applying a force p like this then you'll get a solution like this which is a straight line let's say we add another node here then in this case you may get a solution like this and let's say we add a node here and a node here then you may get a solution like this so the more the number of nodes you have the more accurate will be your solution to the theoretical closed form solution or to the solution from the analytical method we can imagine it like this let's say we have circle element and we are only assigning four nodes then what will happen is that these nodes will be connected like this this is your element and then let's say we increase the number of nodes let's say now we're using one two three eight nodes which means that these will connect it like this
now this here is much closer to the circular configuration than this one therefore if you have many nodes then your solution will be closer to the analytical solution now I'll discuss about degrees of freedom as well so what do you mean by degrees of freedoms let's say we have a space we have a space like this and this can be x-axis this can be y-axis and let's say we have a point here now if we are looking in a 2d plane then this point is located at a certain distance x1 from the origin in the horizontal direction and certain distance y1 in the vertical direction or in the y-axis then your point is defined by coordinates x1 y1 now this x1 y1 are based on x-axis and y-axis so this point has two degrees of freedom one is in along x-axis one is along y-axis let's say we're looking in a in a cuboid section like this now to define this point or the movement of this point from here to here what do we need we need location along x-axis location along y-axis and location along z-axis this is all translation now this point here can also rotate about x-axis g-axis and y-axis so this one has six degrees of freedom in a 3d space this is in a 2d therefore degrees of freedoms mean the minimum number of parameters which may be coordinates which are required to define the location or the position of that entity you may have studied in structural analysis like let's say you have beam here like this then this one has two degrees of freedom as it, it can rotate like this and rotate like this if you are considering the axial direction as well then this one also has one more degree of freedom here because this one can stretch so this one has three degrees of freedom considering the axial direction or two degrees of freedom if you are neglecting that so in a finite element analysis degrees of freedom mean a lot it is a very very important concept because if you are doing an analysis like this let's say you are doing a 2d plate analysis like this you have a plate like this and you have nodes here one two three four four nodes and here you can see that each node will have two degrees of freedom now for this structure here total degrees of freedom will be equal to number of nodes times degrees of freedoms per node two degrees of freedom four times two that is eight so for this type of structure you have to solve eight different degrees of freedom which will include forces and displacements occurring at these nodes so this is about fem finite element method so the important concepts here you should know are about nodes elements and degrees of freedom please be familiar with these terms
because I'll be using these terms frequently in coming chapters. SAP 2000, you are familiar with E tabs. Use FEM to solve your problems. And there are certain generalized programs such as Abacus. You can go and look into what is Abacus and how to model these structures in Abacus in, in my another playlist where I have solved numerical problems analytically and have modeled them in Abacus and we compare the results. And ANSYS is another type of software that uses FEM. Now Abacus and ANSYS are generalized programs where you can model any type of structure or any type of shape with different properties where SAP and ETAPS are more into structures and buildings, bridges and all that. Now what I've done here is in the link below in the description I have shared chapter 1 of a book you can get from Makalu publication house entitled computational technique which is according to TU syllabus just to get you started so you can have a read in the first weeks or so before I go into next chapter which is chapter 2 and I have also shared first chapter of a book entitled technology environment and society in the link below you can download it and have a look but I'm not authorized to share other chapters because this will be a copyright problem so you can actually call Makala publication house if you want to further read or reference those books so this is just a basic introduction of what is numerical computation or computational techniques yeah I'll be moving into chapter 2 in the next lecture. If you have any questions, you can comment below or you can send an email directly to the given email address below. Please do share, comment and subscribe to this channel. Hope you like this lecture session. See you next time. Ciao.